In a world where image is everything, people make assumptions about you before they've even spoken to you. I don't feel attractive. No one's actually really seen me with my hair off. Looking different can be daunting. If that was me before, yeah. what would I look like if it wasn't for the syndrome? It never stops, does it? It's like a life sentence, isn't it? Yeah. We follow three extraordinary young people living with a facial disfigurement. I just want to be out with friends and doing things, and I can't do the things I want to do anymore, which is really horrible. It's just literally a different shade of colour on your skin. <laughs> That's quite literally what it is. They reveal emotional first-hand accounts. Kids, they have no filter, they just say what's on their mind. My name would never be Yasmin. It would always be, oh, you know, that girl with the weird face. It's a bit emotional, isn't it? <laughs> of how they battle to rise above the judgement of others. Oh, I knew I was going to get that bit wrong. No pain, no gain. <laughs> finding the determination to overcome their disfigurement. If I were to let it hold me back, I think that would be really kind of, it would just be really sad. Come well in. done. I guess you just got to put on that brave face and get on with it, isn't it? <laughs>
I'm where I've put the weight on with steroids and mm. you know all of my health and that I'm more self-conscious now in a weird way mm. than I ever was before but mm. you know I'm just a bit nervous about it I don't want people to associate the fact I have a good voice with the fact that I don't look the same way as everyone else. Do you know what I mean? Like a novelty. Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I could use it to my advantage, but I don't want to be no. judged in a way. But do you, you enjoyed it though when you did it before though? Yeah, it was good. I had such a laugh and I think it was really nice. I don't know. I don't know what I'm worried about. But you're not working, you're not working as much though, are you now? Are I'm you? not working at all. At all, that's what I mean, no. as in like, so that's probably affected your confidence in that. I think it you is. Don't deal with, you don't deal with strangers. That's so, that is, that's a, uh, that was a big, good point. Exactly. And, exactly. and with open mics, you're it's singing to a group strangers. of strangers. Yeah. Exactly, that's so true. Mm. Life is about pushing yourself out your comfort zone mm. sometimes, isn't it? And I think I'm so in this town, in my comfort zone, and I just want to do something to kind of push out a little bit. Do you and know what I mean? If you've had that sort of inkling, then definitely go for it. I think I'm going to go for it. Yeah. I think I'm going to go for it. Around 66,000 people in the UK have disfigurements, which have been caused by accidents. I always lean forward in the car, I don't know why. You know what it is, it's because um, I'm so used to go-karting. <laughs> 24-year-old Roche from London suffered 70% burns in a house fire when she was just 18 months old. I lost a few fingertips, a few toes, um, then uh, one of my ears and a bit of balance. <laughs> I also lost the majority of hair on my head um, and my facial features. There's been so many operations, I actually don't know how many there's been now. I kind of, when you're little, you don't really keep count of all that stuff. Um, I'd say it's well over 100 operations. It was a bit tricky at times growing up, um, but when you're younger, a lot of people just don't understand. That made it a bit harder, but with kids, they have no filter, they just say what's on their mind. <laughs> I guess you just got to put on that brave face and get on with it, isn't it? What really matters in life is not, yeah, I look different and yeah, I've got burns, and yeah, I've got, got a disfigured face, but it, that doesn't really matter at the end of the day because we're, we've, all, we've all got dreams and we've all got aspirations, and like as long as you like go out and live every day and don't let what happened to you defeat you, I guess you're winning. Twenty-four-year-old Roche lives with a facial disfigurement. When she was a toddler, she was involved in a house fire and lost most of her hair. She now has a special wig made. Every six months, the hair has to be removed and washed. I can't wait to be able to, like, scratch my own hair. But it feels like, imagine you've got a towel on your head. Well, not a towel, it's a bit thick. So imagine, like, you've got, like, a sock on your hand. <laughs> All your hands in tights and you go to scratch your head. That's what it feels like. But no, I do like having the hair on. It's a nice um, touch to my outfits. <laughs> nice to see. Yeah. It's not too mangled. <laughs> it's a bit emotional, isn't it? <laughs> So when you get used to wearing the hair um, for so long, you kind of forget what's underneath. And so like when I see it again, I'm like, oh yeah, that's that's not my hair anymore. This is my hair. It's it's just weird because it's like going back in time in my head. If you know what I mean? Yeah. After the wig is cleaned, it's stitched and bonded onto the little hair Roche has left. And that's definitely forward enough for you? Yeah. yeah. Maybe a little bit. A little bit. Tiny more bit. Yeah, I think so. Probably to about there. Yeah. When we trim the mesh, it's going to sit like that. OK. Yeah? Cool. Yeah. It's an extremely intricate process, which takes up to eight hours. So no one has actually really seen me with my hair off. Before I had the wigs, I used to wear hats and bandanas 
and like wigs that you could just take off on, on a daily basis. My worry with people seeing me without my hair is um, the reaction from childhood when people did see my hair. It was like, oh my God, horror. It made me feel a bit alien. And so I guess I'm kind of worried about that happening again. Having hair is like when you put makeup on, it's like your, your body armour to go out that front door and like face the world. And so like without it, I'm not protected, I guess. It's, it's my safety blanket. <laughs> it's such an important part of my daily routine now. I just feel like one of the girls, should I say. It makes me feel like I'm a bit more in touch with my feminine side. I like the feel of like fresh, nice, clean hair. <laughs> Not that I don't clean it. <laughs> <laughs> but no, yeah, and it definitely feels like a lot more secure where it's, the bonds are tightened, it's nice. I like it. Eight hours later, Roche's hair is complete. Okay. Cheers. Done. Thank you. Is that all white in the front? It's okay? Amazing. Yeah. So that's my hair appointment. <laughs> <laughs> Got my body armour on now, full set. Got my clothes, my face and my hair. <laughs> The 25-year-old Yasmin has a rare condition that affects the left side of her face. At times, she shies away from being in public because of her disfigurement. I have to say, I always drive. Um, and I actually have free bus pass because of my disabilities and that but I hate getting on buses and being so close to people and people getting different angles of my face. Like if someone sat next to me, like to the left side of me, they'd see the left side of my face and that would be it. And I think subconsciously that's something that stopped me from using public transport as much. Every aspect of my life is probably affected by the syndrome. Everything from the fatigue and the medication to looking in the mirror every day. It's not something you can just switch off and think, oh, it's not there. Yasmin had no symptoms of the condition as a young child, and her face was unaffected. Today, she's visiting her grandparents. They looked after her a lot when she was a child. I definitely think it's important to have that support network around you, because one thing my mum always says is, friends can come and go, but your family are always there for you. And I think that's 100% true. I mean, I've got some amazing, amazing friends, but your family, you know everything about you and are with you 24 seven pretty much. And so I think it's so important to have that strong, solid support around you, definitely. Do you want to watch a few videos of when um, I was younger? Yeah. Well, That'd be cool. Do you want to watch some videos? Yes. Yeah. Well. Should we have a look? <laughs> Remember that dress? So do I, I've still got it. Oh. Look at me then. Have a little picture of the bag. <laughs> but you can see my face was totally symmetrical there, wasn't it? Mm. He made me jump. I thought he did, yeah. You know, as a child, you're so innocent and so unaware and you're just playing and you just have no care in the world. And then to grow up and have the responsibility of having to face the fact of what's happening is a big thing, I think. So it's, it's hard to see the innocence of just being able to play and climb trees and go on my bike and not worry about all the problems I have to worry about now. As a young person, you weren't leading, able to lead, to lead a normal life. life. Exactly. I think I've been in hospital since 2014, probably about 50 times, I'd say. Yeah. Would you say about 50 times? I would say at least. At least 50 <laughs> times. It does yeah. take your life away, really, you know. As a normal 25-year-old, I just want to be out of friends and doing things and I can't do the things I want to do anymore which is really horrible like I'd love to be a nurse I'd love to be a nurse but 
you know, at the moment that's just not feasible, is it? Well, you enjoyed no. working, didn't you? Mm, I used to love working, my little job, yeah. It's hard, isn't it? Because um, your life just gets taken over, I suppose. Two wine guns there, do you When you've seen that, you've fought to get better. Mm. That makes you so proud. Oh, thank you, Granny. Mm -hmm. Glad I got you. Glad we've got you. <laughs> you might be crying now. <laughs> She's very good at doing that, you know. She's very good at doing that, yeah. <laughs> Around one in 1,000 children in the UK is born with a port wine stain. 22-year-old Chloe has one which affects her body and her face. She's currently studying English at University College London. I've kind of had treatments and surgery and stuff since I was little. And I've had multiple surgeries on my, like, laser on my birthmark. And then I've actually got glaucoma in my left eye as well. So I have had a lot of operations on that because my sight is quite bad and fat kind of non-existent now. I've had operations on my lip as well because it's kind of bigger than usual size. So I've had two kind of reduction surgeries on that as well. The main thing it's affected me with is kind of just, I don't feel attractive. In the past, especially kind of when I was, I don't know, 15, 16, 17, I just felt really horrendously ugly and like no one was ever going to love me. And I suppose even though I sort of knew deep down that like, you know, the right person wouldn't care and all that kind of stuff. Um, I just kind of thought, like, it's never going to happen for me and it's going to be an issue my whole life and how am I ever going to get past it? It just, yeah, it made me kind of feel really miserable for a long time. There is a lot of pressure to kind of look a certain way and to be kind of perfect and... It is quite hard not to let that get you down I and mean, I'm sure it affects everyone. I'm sure it's not just something that, you know, affects me or people like me, but... Obviously, when you've got an obvious reason that you kind of stand out, it just make everything that little bit more difficult because you think, well, you know, everyone is automatically going to see something different about me, which I can't hide. I feel like every other part of me kind of has to be better than it would otherwise because I'm trying to compensate. But at the same time, I also think, you know, it drives me to hopefully do well and kind of work hard and like do all the things that I kind of enjoy in spite of it. So yeah, in that sense, I think it's a really positive thing. I remember this, this jump, I used to wear it all the time. Today, Roche is visiting Pat. She was working on the unit that Roche and her older brother were rushed to with life-threatening burns. And they've been friends ever since. When she came in, there was a chance that she might not make it, a big chance, both of them. So the procedures would be done straight away, so you'd be in the theatre all the night trying to save her, but also trying to use the donor skin to put on straight away to cover the area so it won't get infected and donor areas are really painful when they're healing and it, it took ever such a long time. So yeah, she just went through so much. And um, that was it really. That was with her most of the time, well, all the time really since then. Can't get rid of her. <laughs> <laughs> Pat has watched Roche grow up and seen just how much the burns have affected her life. We used to take up the high street so she'd get used to people staring and she just used to smile at them and that. And I used to think, what they're staring at, you know. But she just used to carry on eating a hot dog. <laughs> and so even though she smiled through it, it must have been... She must have inside been quite hard for her. It was hard for me, so it must have been hard for her. You, you had so many skin grafts in theatres and you can see from her face there that where she had skin put on from parts of her body and also artificial skin to cover the area so it wasn't the same colour as your skin and then later on we was able to take skin off of you and therefore then we could get your face back to more of your natural colour. It's really interesting to see how far the burns have come along. Yeah. They've definitely smoothed out. I love this one, viewing Terrell. 
with another hat on. That's a really nice one. I remember mum went to smile. Yeah. And we always used to pull faces. Yeah. <laughs> it was actually burned more than Terrell because I think Terrell was running around in the room, wasn't he? You was in a cot, which is why your burns were so bad on your legs because you were sitting in it before the fireman could get into the door, knock the door down. It feels a bit strange because <laughs> uh, obviously I've changed a lot since then. Quite, quite cute, isn't it? <laughs> That's the best one. He's got no eyebrows there. No. Does it make such a difference? It's strange looking back without eyebrows and hair. I know. How time flies. Very oh, good, certainly does. People don't realise it's a continual, it's a continual thing, burn injuries. It's not like a broken leg and it's better. Um, when you grow, it don't grow with you, so. It's like you act your skin, really, so you have to have it released. <laughs> and that's not pleasant, is it? I mean, obviously, no. I don't know myself. It's, it's but... not ideal. It can sometimes be a bit of an inconvenience, but you've got to get yourself done at the end of the day. You can't just wait and wait around till it, it gets better, because it won't it'll only get worse. Never stops, does it? No, it's, it's like a life sentence, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it's just, mm, yeah, it is, actually, yeah. But then, it's a horrible thing that happened to you, but at least you, you got to know each other. Yeah, it's like yeah. a... Just a different way would have been nicer. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit like a blessing in disguise. Yeah, that's what they say. You treated it like not to get you down and, and everything, so... Yeah, admiration, I think, is the word. Admiration. Don't scrub up so too bad, do she I? She don't scrub up bad. <laughs> no, she scrubs up good. Twenty-two-year-old Chloe has a port wine stain on her body and face. Today, she's on her way to Brighton to see best friend Holly. When we were little, we were just like inseparable, um, and so she just knows me so well. So it's kind of. She's that person who I always feel comfortable talking to about stuff, and yeah, we just like, we know we've kind of always got each other, so yeah, it's really nice. There are definitely times when I imagine like, oh, what if I didn't have it? Life would be so much easier. But I think, no, I wouldn't get rid of it, because it's, I wouldn't be me. I mean, it's such a cliche, but like, all the stuff that I've kind of learned and done because of it has kind of made me who I am. So hopefully it's kind of made me a better person. I don't know. <laughs> That's what I like to tell myself. <laughs> I don't want it to stop me from doing anything. I want it to kind of just be, it's just a part of me and it's like a part that I'm quite happy with actually now. So yeah, if I were to let it hold me back, I think that would be really kind of, it would just be really sad. Like there's, there's no need for it to hold me back. Um, I think there are going to be things which is always going to kind of, which are always going to bother me about it, but it's never going to stop me doing stuff that I'm really kind of keen to do. <laughs> Chloe's port wine stain is close to her eye, which means she has glaucoma, a raised pressure within the eye that can lead to blindness. Have you driven yet? Have I driven? No. <laughs> you imagine me driving? I can't even see properly. I'm going to kill someone if I try to drive. How is that at the moment? Not good. Really? I can't really see anything. Really? In my left eye. I mean, obviously, I can see out of the side. Fine. Are you like, allowed to drive then? Well, I don't know. I haven't asked, but I'm not sure if I will be able to. Because I can't see anything on the left side, and also, I can't, like, I have no depth perception. So, so if I will be able to tell how far away a car is. I think they, they said to you, didn't they? Oh, yeah, by the time you're 21, it might be totally gone or something. Mm hmm. But can you see anything out of it at all? Yeah, a bit. Not much. She's always been my smartest friend. Definitely. Most clever. Thanks, babe. You were the academic one out of the group of us growing up. Sort of. You can be gentle. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm joking. <laughs> Just very kind. We always put other people first. Aww. And considering what you've obviously had to go through, it's not likely that people have had to go through a lot in time in their lives sort of tend to be generous people, but you've always been very giving 
Definitely. Fine. I'd have to say. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Twenty-five-year-old Yasmin's rare condition lay dormant until she was seven, when the disease began to disfigure her face. Is that okay for you? Yeah, it's lovely. Good. For Yasmin's mum, Hani, watching an incurable disease take hold of her daughter's face was heartbreaking. When do you think it kind of was that you first noticed something was up with my face? Well, do you remember it was when um, you were about seven and mm. um, you had a couple of little minor accidents but whereas normally your body starts repairing itself, doesn't it? Unusually, these little injuries started to almost like cave in on your Dentin, head. Dent in, yeah. Yeah, and as a parent, it was quite scary, really, because I think at first they were treating them almost like skull fractures. And I remember thinking, what on What's going happening? on, yeah. What on earth's happening? Obviously, as a mum, it was quite heartbreaking. You know, nobody wants to feel that um, that their child has got anything um, of course. wrong. And nobody could tell me how bad it would get. No. Photos of Yasmin's life show just how much her face has changed over the years. Oh, oh I love this, this one. This is my school photo. Huge brown eyes and a pretty little face. You look so cute. I, I look, it doesn't even look like me. And like, your face is so symmetrical, so symmetrical there. And again, you have beautiful brown eyes. You know, when you think that's only a couple of years before you had the first signs of the Perry Yeah, birds. it is, isn't um, it? I must be about five then, maybe? Yeah, I think you're about five, and that's your first so, school photo, that one. Mm. So then we've got this one here. I think that's probably around the time that we noticed the little dents. So you can just see there, can't you? you that can. When I'm smiling, that I've got it's more just, of a crease on yeah. that side. So this is your first one at secondary school, isn't it? And the it? difference between those. Yes, that's If you that's think massive. that is massive, yeah. that's 18 months. Yeah, about 18 months. And you can see the difference yeah, is that, there's massive. there's a huge difference. I remember when I went to secondary school, it all kind of changed because everyone was like, what's wrong with you? What's wrong with your face? Like, every question would be Whereas that. Whereas they'd never noticed No, because in primary school, they grew up with me yes, and they were like yeah. my peers and it's like... It must have been really difficult to cope with. I think it was, actually. But I wish I just, you'd talk to me about it. I know, I wish I did as well, but mm. I just kind of shut it in the back of my mind and put my mask on and just acted like nothing was going on, I And suppose. I think I didn't want to bring up the subject because I didn't no, want to upset you. No, it didn't upset you. me. This That's is the sixth form, isn't it? it was. Yeah, yeah, when you were 17. I mean, gracious. It makes me feel like, what could I look like? If that was me before, yeah. what would I look like if it wasn't for the syndrome? Yeah, it's um, in a way good to see those photos because it makes me realise how, how far, far you've come. come. Yeah, yeah, you're right, definitely. Mm. Oh, I think that people see you as your personality. They may yeah. see your face when you f they first see you, but then but then they they you come across as such a confident and vivacious and lovely person um, that I think that that's the thing that people remember about you, not what you look like. Well, I've got it from you, I think. <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> definitely. <laughs> Roche has burns across 70% of her body. Over time, she's learned to be more comfortable with the way she looks. I used to, like, live makeup and wear it every day. I would never leave the house without it. I think I put makeup on now more for just fun rather than it being a, something that I have to do every day. In some places, I've got to put more foundation than others. It's like on this bit of my cheek here and my chin here. So I get an, an even coverage, like go all one tone. <laughs> Cause I'm like 50 shades of black. So <laughs> just got to even it out a bit. Having a facial difference, obviously people would see like the scars on my face, like the lines, the, the unevenness in the skin tone. They'd obviously see that, but then where I always make sure I'm smiling so it takes their focus off my burns and what I look like to, oh my God, look at a really nice smile. Well, I think it's a nice smile. But um, yeah, so that's why I kind of put on makeup because it takes people's focus off my burns. Yeah, I think that's what really helps me get out of that front door. You just got the zone, do your power pose in the mirror. I'm like, right, come on girl, you can do this. I, it's really cringy. <laughs> 
Roche's facial features were so damaged in the house fire that she lost both of her eyebrows. Hi, Rochelle, how are you? All right? I'm good, how are you? Good. Yeah, no Today, she's having her eyebrow tattoos topped up. I'm noticing that you're just doing them a little bit squarer at the front. Yeah. Shall we just draw them on for you and make sure that we're doing them a little bit squarer? Because is that the shape what you're liking now? Yeah. Great, we'll do that then. Initially, I didn't feel the need to have eyebrows. And I thought, I don't know what they're naturally meant to look like. I might look a bit like a clown. But then, like, after getting them done, I just felt like... I just felt a bit more glamorous and a bit more feminine, like a bit more me. And so, yeah, I've never really looked back since. After having them done, did it make you feel more confident? Maybe? Yeah. I felt like I could get up every day and feel a little bit more effortless. Like, yeah. I didn't feel the need to put my makeup on every day and... Because yeah. you've got your brows yeah, on? Yeah, I've got my glam brows on. Yeah. Your eyebrows are, are really important for everybody's face because it, it really defines your features. Eyes ain't watering too much, are they? No, they're not watering. <laughs> no, we're fine. No pain, no gain. <laughs> no, yeah. The end results are worth it. I've been through a lot worse. Yeah. This isn't too bad. <laughs> Great, let me show you. Take your red bonnet off and then you'll be able to see them better. Yeah? Yeah, I like them. They're not too bad. Yeah, yeah not too shabby. Not too <laughs> <laughs> I, I feel like top cap. <laughs> it sounds a bit weird. I've got my power brows back. <laughs> All right then, see, yeah, you see you later. Take care, see you later, bye bye. Twenty-five-year-old Yasmin has always been close to her younger sister, Danny. Oh my goodness, that is so sweet. That's really With a little nice. corduroy. She's decided so to face her fear and perform at an open mic night. So she's shopping to find the perfect look for her big performance. I want something that's going to make me feel a bit more sassy. Yeah. <laughs> Could I try these on if that's all right in a six? I think they're too pointy. They look at their nice. They're really nice. Do my laces up, Good Mum. To you. I just get really out of breath and I bend down. <laughs> <laughs> At 25, it's not always the best thing. Are you worried about how many people will be there? Yeah, I'm kind of worried. Because I don't really know how busy this place gets. No, because I have I haven't even been down there. Because like, I didn't want to go down there because I knew it made myself more nervous. Yeah. It will be a nice surprise. Oh, like, look at these. Oh my gosh, that's really cute. One thing I'm worried about is that people are going to be sort of, everyone's looking at me and I can't sort of turn one way, like a photo, you know, in a photo you can be like... Sort yeah, of, you can have your good, I mean? good, good angles. Good, good, good angles. Mm. It's quite difficult because you know people are going to stare. Oh, of course. Um, but it's sometimes it's knowing who's staring because they curiosity. Yeah, exactly. And who's staring because... Because they're rude. They need, yeah, yeah, a better understanding. Yeah. Oh, look at this skirt. Bit of velvet. I think you'll do great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And if anyone whispers anything, you know. Yeah, you got my back. I'll take my She's back. got my back. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> That's nice, actually, isn't it? Oh, look at those trousers. Oh, they're nice. At the end of each day, Yasmin removes her mask of makeup, and the full extent of her condition is apparent. I feel like my eyes just get so much smaller, especially the left eye. Yeah, it's really weird looking without makeup at myself. You know, it's it's not something I like to make a habit of. <laughs> when I come to the evening and I sit down, take it all off and look in the mirror again, I'm like, oh yeah, suddenly remember the fact that I'm not exactly the same as everyone else, if that makes sense. I don't know, it makes me feel a bit sad when I take it all off because I can see the disfigurement so much more. And it's like taking that suit of armor off again and kind of being like weak and susceptible to attack, if that makes sense.
For 25-year-old Yasmin, the nerves are beginning to kick in because after weeks of practice, it's the day of the open mic night. Think, oh, I knew I was gonna get that bit wrong. Think I know you're okay. I'm feeling a little bit apprehensive, but I'm also a little bit excited as well because it's gonna be really nice to sort of show people what I've written. I think it's really important that it does go well tonight and people have like a good reception um, because I want people to say Yasmin has got a nice voice. I don't want people to define me by obviously the disfigurement. It's such a big thing for me. If I don't get the right reception back or if people don't enjoy it, I'll just feel as if, you know, I haven't made the right impression and I want to make a good impression tonight on people. Yasmin needs to complete her extensive makeup routine and perfect her outfit. Sister Danny is on hand to help. How are you getting on? Just preoccupied. So what do you think of this? These it's are the so trousers. Nice. And that's the little top. Oh, it looks so good. Do you think it looks all right? Yeah. This is also this is option one. Right, I'll go try second option on. Second option? Second option. <laughs> she gets really self-conscious. I think that's why she, whenever she has to go to a new event or do something new, she always has to buy a new outfit. It makes her forget about what people might be thinking. But yeah. Option two. Option two. Aww, what that's so think? cute. I like it. Let's have a look. How does oh, it I feel? quite like it, yeah. Yeah, it feels nice. Do you prefer it to the trousers, or do you prefer the trousers? I mean, it's different to the trousers. I think I should go for the trousers. I don't know if I should go for the, this dress. Yeah. Yeah. If, yeah, go for the trousers then. Yeah, I really think I should go for the trousers. Yeah. Growing up, we were always at each other's throats, but then when my yeah. brother was born, we became thick as thieves, didn't yeah. we? Yeah, I think it was also, we used to share a room and we hated each other. Yeah. Do you find on that side of your face that your skin's like more oily or dry? Uh, it's or more dry. dry on this side and more oily on this side, and I get spots on this side. But the good thing about my condition is I don't get spots on the left side. Do you not get no, spots? No, never had a spot on the left side of my face ever. That's actually quite even as a teenager. Good that you work and see the positive. Yeah, well you've got to, you've got to have some positives of it, you know. Yeah. A little bit pampered, aren't you? I'm a bit pampered. I'm not used to this. <laughs> I'm starting to get a bit nervous because I know it's getting closer to the time when we have to leave. I might need some Dutch courage. I just feel like since I put the weight on and since my eyes sunk more on that, I just don't really want to, you know, I just don't feel as confident as, as I would, mm. if that makes any sense. Mm. Do you think, well, if you do this tonight, then it will give you a bit more confidence? Yeah, definitely. Like, do if it, it goes again. well tonight, I'll be like, I'll be so up for doing it again. Yeah. So hopefully it'll go well. Cool, you like your zhuzh, don't you? Yeah. And then you just... Yeah. That's good. I, it's really nice. Works a dream. Works a treat. And I feel better in the trousers, I think, definitely. Yeah, you look really yeah. nice. Thanks, Morsh. <laughs> Twice as many women live with a port wine stain as men. 22-year-old so Chloe is reflecting with best friend Holly on what life's been like growing up with a facial disfigurement. I remember feeling very like defensive. Really? Because I remember what the main issue, one of the main issues whenever we'd go into town was that a lot of the time people would sometimes like look or point or something. And I remember just being a bit like, what's your problem? <laughs> <laughs> the first time I kind of talked to you about it, it was quite a relief in a way, because it was kind of like, oh, I can actually like, tell you how I feel and I knew that you would understand. Like, I remember anyone. understanding, but I also, because it was something that I'd grown up with you, I remember just thinking, why are you bothered about it? It's not really? an issue, yeah. <laughs> so a part of me was like, no, I really get it. It's, a, it's, it's actually must be really difficult for you. Yeah. And when you start getting more aware of how you look or if you're more interested in boys and that yeah, kind of boy, thing. The boy boys thing. Because the <laughs> <laughs> then you're so aware of like the kind yeah. of I don't society. like, it's never been a problem with friends because I don't, I just like take it for granted that my friends won't care. But when it's suddenly like someone's, you want someone to be interested in you, interested in you for how you look. Well, you're worried enough as it is how you look as a girl yeah, or a course, guy when yeah. you want someone to fancy you if you fancy them back. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like the first like, crushes you have as a teenager and things, you're a lot more aware. Yeah. Especially if your body's changing and stuff. 
but um, it's just literally a different shade of colour on your skin. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's quite literally that's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> so why should that be an issue yeah. for anyone? As a result, I think you've always been very understanding of other people's issues or struggles that they've gone through, because yeah. you can be more empathetic with them. Like, I would hope that it's kind of made me a bit more empathetic. Yeah. Do you ever feel as well, like, if you do walk into a room and someone kind of takes a bit of a double look, does that make you feel a bit It just I, sad or...? It doesn't make me feel sad, it just makes me feel, like, unsure of how to deal with it a bit. Like, the job kind of situation would be one instance where it's a bit... It's a little bit tricky because it's a very formal mm. You don't want to walk in and go, oh, I'm Chloe, don't worry, I know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm aware. <laughs> Check it out, it's on my arm too. Like, <laughs> it's not something you're going to go and like, set them at ease and be like, do you want to check out my ankle? <laughs> There's no hiding it, really. That's so. the thing. <laughs> I'm just going to go with it. But like, that's always been, I think that's always been really cool because it makes you unique as well. Yeah. It makes you true. stand out and you're like, hey. <laughs> everyone always says, oh, well, you know, you're not like anyone else in the world. Yeah. So in that respect, you know, it makes you you. Pressure now. Being in the public eye can be daunting for someone who has a facial disfigurement. 25-year-old Yasmin is about to face her fear and perform at a local open mic night. Okay, everybody, that was Jim. A big hand for Jim. Big Woo! Go, Jim! Young lady called Jasmine coming up. Go on, yeah. Woo! 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 How's that? Yeah, that's all right, isn't it? Okay, so... Oh, this is loud. I can hear my voice, it's a bit scary. <laughs> um, this is a song called Triangles and Circles that I wrote about being stuck in a love triangle, which I'm sure some people can relate to. Never been too good at geometry, but I really thought you were the one for me. Cause even mathematicians get it wrong. Let's guess you love. Just to be kind. I think it went really well, actually, it didn't it? It so good, I, yeah. I have to admit, the first bit, the chords, I was getting a bit wrong. You did so well, though. Once it's, I got into it, it was fine. And like you were singing, it was the best it's been. Yeah. Like the best run through. Exactly. going round in circles, I just wanted this to change. Everyone went so quiet as soon as I know, you that's singing. what I thought. I was like, everyone was listening. quiet. Cause triangles and circles aren't the same. I definitely feel like I want to do more now. That's so good. Definitely did. Yeah. They'll definitely have you back. Really good. Thanks for coming. Well done. <laughs> Proud of you. Thank you. <laughs> Cause triangles and circles aren't the same. I'm definitely glad that I overcame the fear because if I hadn't have done it, I would just be sitting at home tonight, you know, and coming out and having fun with everyone and going and doing it, it's been so rewarding and I feel like it's been a real stepping stone onto other things and maybe even bigger things, you never know. I think it just proves that people take you for what you are and, you know, if you don't look the way that you know, the norm is conformed to, then that doesn't matter, because at the end of the day, everyone takes you for your voice and your talent and the person you are inside, and I think I've really learnt that tonight. Yasmin continues to perform at open mic nights and has started filming her own online makeup videos. Roche has been taking part in photo shoots aimed at promoting body confidence for those who look different. And Chloe is applying for law placements, determined not to let her port wine stain hold her back.